Hey everyone, Nonagon here again. This video we're going to talk a lot about SQL injection. So for those of you that are not familiar with SQL injection, this is where someone who wants to get into your database to do nasty things, they would do this through parameters to alter your SQL to do things that you don't want it to do. Put another way, it's basically manipulating your SQL strings and changing them uh, to do bad things. So I'll go over a few of these in here and give you some practical examples of what it is and how to prevent it. So continuing on from the MySQL database tutorial video that I did, I mean, here's the same code base. So what we're going to do in here is I'm going to create another controller. This one will be user controller. And this is probably a really good practical example of where you'll see something like this. So let's copy this over and this is user controller. <clears throat> We're going to have, uh, I'll just get rid of this to make it simpler. So we'll call this login. And what I really want to do is, let's see, so user where, this is a typical scenario, you know, where email equals Let's say we'll just do email. So if some form is submitted, we're just going to do a get just for the simplicity of showing you what is happening. But if you did this in a post, you could do that as well. So we'll call this you know, email equals, uh, you could do it this way, get email. You could also do it as just get email. So we'll have this, and then actually I really want to we'll just output the same SQL so we can just see exactly what it's doing. So we'll come back to our handy dandy browser. Let's see, is this puppy still working? No, gotta start my local web server up, local host. And I could put this command in Composer, but I'm just trying to illustrate this for you all out there. Okay, now we're back in business. We're gonna make a new table, very, very simple. Users, ID, auto increment, email, and we'll just password. Uh, We'll do, I know you don't do MD5 anymore. Please don't use MD5 anymore. This is just a very simple example. Actually, I can't do that. I can't show you MD5, it's just terrible. So we'll do SHA-256. So now we, it's very, very simple. And then we'll add an index because you should add indexes on email. It's where you are. It's in the part of the where statement where you're selecting stuff. So we're gonna add an index, even though this is totally overkill for what we're doing. Just get in the habit of always adding indexes where you need to. All right, so now we have a users table, and actually we'll pop back in here. We're gonna create a new user. Uh, let's see, our, our email is uh, patfree at example.com. I could type it right. And password, does it do, oh, it does do SHA-1. Fine, we'll just do SHA-1. And we'll type a bunch of random stuff. Super. So now we have that. So let's just say we're going to look up a, an email or something like that. You know, here's a login. Usually what happens is you use the password hash in PHP to generate a hash through bcrypt. You take that, you pull the password in your database and you compare the hash with what they just entered with what's in your database. And if they match, then it's the right password. But first we need to pull out their email. So let's just say where email equals this, but, and I'm gonna var dump it, it's gonna be really, really simple. So now I need to come back over here and add another route. We're just gonna call this one login, just to be simple. User, controller, and login. So coming back here, we have login. And then I added that parameter for email. 
email equals test at test.com. Aha, uh -huh. helps if I name it right. Desserts. All right, so didn't find anyone, but here's the SQL string that came out. So, all right, well, let's you know, make this easier. So here we have at three at example.com. It's working right. We have our ID, we have our email, we have our password. So what in the world could possibly go wrong, right? Well, here's what goes wrong. Let's go back to our previous example. Test at whocares.com. We didn't pull up anybody. And if we're looking at this, just bear in mind that this is still just a string. It's just a string. So if this is just a string, then this is a string that we could tell whatever we want to do, whatever we want. So we could do something like this. Uh, let's see if Chrome lets us do it, or Firefox lets us do it. So we could do a quote to end what we wanted to do, or one equals one, and then that looks really funny, but I want us, you to see what it looks like. Comment. There we go. So if, this doesn't look natural, but I output this specifically for this reason. Select it from user, where user equals. Now suddenly it looks like there's a quote there, and it's like where email is blank or one is equal to one. Well, one is always equal to one. And then this <clears throat> is a comment syntax. So anything that comes after this is now not used anymore. So, if I had another user in there, let's add another user. So, uh, good guy at example.com and another shot there. Blah, 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 blah. So, now when I come back here, it's now pulling both people. It's, not, it's no longer just pulling one person or another person, or they didn't find them. Well, what if I was like, uh, but maybe your login form is kind of intelligent and it's looking for only one person. Well, that's no problem. All I have to do is do limit one, and now I just get one. Or, you know, I could do order by ID descending, and now I pull up the other guy. Like, I'm just writing SQL in here. This is not an, a complicated thing. So now, how do we prevent this? This is kind of crazy. This is scary. Like, people could do really bad things. Uh, I've been involved in instances where a software I was working on had SQL injection, and there's a bot that just goes around to different login sites and see if it can get in through uh, SQL injection. And sure enough, it got into ours and posted weird pictures and did weird things with its uploading, and then it hopped out. It was just not fun. I didn't like doing it. I didn't like dealing with it. How do you prevent this from happening? That's what I'm here for. So how you prevent this from happening is you stop using this. Stop it. Do you want to do this? Oh, wait a minute. What if you are super smart and you do this? Does that make it better? No, it does not make it better. What if this is more like an ID field where it's like, so instead of the email equals this, it's you know, ID equals, and this is an ID. What, is that better? No. What if you remove the quotes? Is that better? No. It is not better. Stop. Stop it. Just stop all of this business here. Stop it. So what you actually will do is you could do one of two methods. One of, I guess there's more than that, but we're only going to focus on two. You put a question mark here. And you're like, what is going on? Why am I putting a question mark there? Then... You put email in here. So this parameter here is going to get passed here. So, let, But what if we have more than that? Well, let's go add some complexity to this. We're going to create a new column in here, and it's going to be called, like, role. And we're going to run in 50, and 
we'll come over here and we'll just say this guy is you wouldn't do this this is just for illustrative purposes you would just say a role id or you would have a different table where you would map this user has this role id and this is just for simplicity this role is admin and this is we'll just say guest it's very very simple so we'll come back here and you know where email equals this and role equals this. Well, well, okay, well how do we do that? Let's just pretend we're logging into the admin interface and we know it should be admin. So we could either hard code in here admin or what probably is more likely is that we don't know yet and we're trying to determine it. So then you just pass admin and then this will work. So now I'm going to copy this guy so you can see the SQL that's being generated. Actually, there's a fun little trick that I could show you guys. So, still have our terrible SQL injection doing all sorts of bad things. But now, it doesn't pull anything. Nothing is working. Uh, and you can see this is the SQL that's getting generated. Or actually something handy dandy here it is db log this will log all things in the database that gets sent to the query this is also really important if you're pushing something to production you need to set this guy to false otherwise it will log all your queries and it just adds more memory and makes things a little slower it should be false when you are in a production environment anyway so now we just start calling back the log. So here's the log right here. Two milliseconds select from users where, and it, you can see it's doing like back ticks and escaping and all this stuff. And it actually made this, it's trying to look for something that is called exactly this. And of course it's not going to find it. But now what happens when we try and find something we are absolutely expecting? At free at example.com. Bink, it finds it. It finds what we want and it's protected and safe and nestled safely in its little bed at night reading bedtime stories to it. So one other thing you can use is sometimes using question marks is fine in small queries, but if you have a big query and you're adding a bunch of stuff in there, it gets kind of cumbersome on how to deal with it. So what you can do is do named parameters. You do it simply like this. Now this will change a little bit. This is now email. And this is now role. If we refresh, it all still works. It's still doing its magic. Oh, and I guess I have to update. I could do this. So this will help us out. I just do this. SQL, whoops a daisy. Now, I'll just call this well here. I don't have to worry about that. Principles of programming, right? So now we'll come here where email is equal to this and role is equal to this, and it passes in our parameters and it's all protected and safe and warm and fuzzy. So, what about another case where you have, let's just pretend here that depending on what you pass through, you need to change the field name. Well, Field name equals, let's just say this is a terrible and stupid idea, but I see it all the time. Let's just say you have something called, you know, field or whatever. And the field name is like right here. So, <clears throat> well, now what do we do with this? So, and field name equals email. Sorry for the confusion, it helps if you name things correctly. Field name, all right. So now it's working right, here's my query, it says where email is equal to this. So when you used prepared statements, which is what the these name parameters and the question marks are, you can only use those for the right side, we'll call it easy, the right side of the equal sign. You can't use it for anything else. So what do you do when you have something like this? You have to like, you need to dynamically call a field name or sometimes it's you dynamically call a table name. 
what do you do? <clears throat> and surely your first thought is, oh, well, you absolutely just surround it in quotes. Well, again, that's not hard to get around because now you have just opened this up to SQL injection. Because if that didn't work, then I just simply call this Uh, let's see, uh, one equals one equals one. It doesn't really matter. Oh, I'm sure. So come over here, I'm realizing I just made a boo boo. So I'm going to do something like where email <coughs> is not blank. And I can get rid of this. This is my comment. Look at that. So I could still do SQL injection through something else that's not over here, just because remember, this is a string. Strings can be manipulated. So what do you do about this guy so that this doesn't happen? Well, the best thing to do is to whitelist. If you know it can only be one of two options, then make that one of two options. Where field name. So if the field name is equal to email, then it's email. Otherwise, it's username. And it only has two choices. It's not like I could enter in some crazy stuff in here. Otherwise, you could do something like if field name is not equal to email and field name is not equal to username, and I, you are a crook. So one thing to change that I was just realizing was, so let's say we didn't do this whitelisting thing, then I could just do, so now it's a field name. If your field name's not this or it's not this, you are a crook. But if you wanted to just leave them only two choices, then you don't need this because it's either going to be email or username. And if we wanted to, we could come in here and really quickly just add username and because it's selectable add username there so now we have the option of field name is you know if it's something crazy it's going to default to username right and then it will just look up at free example.com it won't find it because that's not a valid username so let's uncomment this guy so it does our little thing Come here, select where username is equal to email and roll is equal to this. Obviously, it's not going to find it. It didn't find it. It won't find it. But that's okay. It just is illustrating that that's how you do that. So this is kind of the technique that you use with this. It's not good enough to just surround it with quotes. It's it, you don't you won't work like that. You have to proactively think, can I change this? And if I can, what would I do? The best thing is you whitelist like only certain values that can go in there, and that's it. That's the end of the story. Or you, again, another whitelisting way, say like, you know, maybe it is allowed to have one, two, three, four, or five things, and that's it. Whitelisting is your best friend here to protect you against that. So I hope this was helpful in helping you understand SQL injection and why it's important and why it can cripple you or expose your server. You could do many more things than I've shown you in here. You could pull down tables and data sets. You could pull down, you could harvest databases this way. You can drop tables. You can drop databases if your user had the permission to do that. Uh, all sorts of things could happen through SQL injection. Uh, again, like they could insert users that they shouldn't use. They could union different tables. They could, there are so many things that you don't know. Please just always use either name parameters, or the question marks, whatever you need to use in order to make it so that you don't have SQL injection happening. So if you enjoy these kinds of videos and you're learning lots and lots, don't forget to subscribe and enjoy more in the future because I'll be super motivated to do so.